Welcome to the Eagle Valley Model Railroad. This video is going to go through the process of exactly how we made this road. I made a little jig so I could mark out my roads. Uh, basically what we have is a single lane, a two lane dirt road, and then a two lane paved road. Just went online and got some uh, dimensions uh, as far as the real deal, what DOT suggests. And one other thing that I did, so I wouldn't have to remember and look it up every time. And I don't know how well this is going to focus in. It may not at all. What we have here are scale feet to real feet dimensions. So your 110 is 1 foot 10 inches in scale feet. The real inches is 0.2574. The real fraction for that is 9 and 3 fifths. And a common fraction that's real close to that is a quarter of an inch. So one foot ten inches, quarter of an inch, that's close enough. And the millimeter for that is 6.5380. Now I've got this and this goes all the way up to 50 scale feet. So anytime I run into uh, an issue to where I, I can't get it in my head exactly what HO scale looks like because I want to build things and I want to see things bigger than what they are. I, ref I can refer back to my to my sheet there but basically with this rig all I do is I stick a pencil in what I'm trying to draw single lane road two lane dirt two lane paved put it down on the layout square it up as much as possible and start drawing roads and um, I'm able to keep it away from the track as much as I can any kind of scenery that I know I'm gonna put somewhere I can keep it away from it and it does a, a pretty decent job on uh, keeping my the the road wide and gives me a good representation of where where my road's gonna be. I wanted to show you guys that. Getting ready to uh build a road across here and have a level grade crossing. We're going to uh, I've removed a good bit of the court road bed all the way up to the ties on both inside and outside of both sets of track and I have used picks to get most of the ballast out from between the ties. Uh, my thought behind that is is if I have a flat square surface to work from I'll be able to build up the road bed to uh, make it as level as possible that way it'll go straight across the tracks. I don't want to do any uh, diamond plate inserts or anything like that. We're doing uh, a concrete or an asphalt. Haven't decided that yet either um, Across both of these sets of tracks, but I do want the road to be level All the way across. I don't want it to go up and then all that good stuff. We used to use those as ramps back in the day uh, Sorry, mom But this is where we're at so far. So we're gonna mess around with it a little more and see if we can come up with some uh, something to shore it up and add us some plaster. All right, so what we have now is we've used some foam and cut it into some strips. And we've got the foam just a little bit higher than rail height. The reason I've done that is we're gonna sand the surface of the road once we laid our plaster down. So we're gonna remove just a little bit of, a, of the plaster so we want it just ever so slightly above the rails. Um, we do have the road on a grade, so it'll go down to a uh, closer to where the foam is now. We do have some double-sided tape. That's the red area that you can see. And then it goes up again, up another grade, to match the level of the railroad at another point. So I've also taken a uh, exacto knife or a box cutter or whatever you want to use 
and I've scored the foam inside where the the plaster is going to lay. I had a situation uh, where I laid some plaster on my mountain on top of the paint and uh, was doing some sanding on it and the whole piece that I had poured came off into my hand. So we scored the foam, got us a rough surface, and at this point we're ready to put some plaster in. All right, so now that we've placed the plaster in and got it relatively smooth, we um, took a set of trucks and just run it through. Uh, probably give it 15 minutes or so to cure. Uh, we're using a sheetrock mud is what we're using. Um, so give it 10 or 15 minutes to cure. That way when you, you remove your sections between your track, the sheetrock mud won't settle. And what I did was laid a paper towel down on the track, um, had it wet, and that way it kept my wheels wet and just run it through a couple of times. Um, I'll probably wait another 30 minutes or so and come back and do the same thing again everywhere the uh of course everywhere the road crosses the track to make sure that the plaster hit in the way of of the flanges so we don't have any derailments um you can wait till after the plaster dries i personally like the look of it being smooth and not a rough cut which is what it typically looks like um, if you do it after the plaster dries. So there may be some more cleaning up to do afterwards once it does dry completely. But if we uh, take our time with it, we can keep it that smooth transition that goes along with the track. So we'll let this dry, and I have no idea how long this stuff's going to take to dry. It's pretty thick. So we'll see. What we've done is we've let this dry for a few days. This has taken longer to dry than I expected it to. Um, we're not using this product as it is specified for. So there's some considerations to take there. But basically what we did was it would dry, it would crack. We would fill in those cracks with more sheetrock mud, let it dry, it would crack, and we would redo that process uh, sanding in between every application of plaster and I believe we've got a road that that we're gonna be all right with we're gonna be able to live with uh, so what I've done is I've let everything dry completely and we've added a base coat of graphite gray it's just an acrylic paint and I like the way it looks um, I've I might very well go with a second coat of this. Uh, my plan was to do a black top on this and just have this as a base coat. But as good as this looks, I might do a um, second coat of this and see what it looks like. I'm not real sure yet. I was painting against the rails just as easy as possible or as careful as possible. But you're going to get paint on your rails. So... All I've done so far is taken a very small flathead screwdriver and I won't do this on camera just because I have to get so close because I don't I don't want to run off into my plaster but I just hardly any pressure at all just scrape that paint right off the top of those rails uh, doesn't scratch the rails so don't freak out on me um, not applying that kind of pressure to it but it's just a way to, to pull that paint off the surface of the rails and uh, cleans up pretty good. So we're going to let this dry completely. Uh, I've already done the rails on one of my pull-offs closer to the lake. I haven't cleaned the rails here uh, because this is the last part I painted. So back there is dry. So I tried it on it and I like the way it worked. 
So we'll get the uh, paint scraped off these rails right here and uh, we'll run some trains across it and make sure everything runs okay. Here's the road. We decided to go with two coats of the graphite acrylic paint. And what we're going to do is uh, get us some stripe decals and stripe it before we weather it. That little pull off right there will go across those two sets of track over to a boat ramp camping area. Crosses this industry spur, goes into the work area, and then right where the lamp's at will be the drive over to the oil company, the chip mill, and the entrance to the uh, intermodal. So this is our first go at the uh, at making a road. And once we get the decals on it, we'll weather it up. This is where we're going to leave it for right now, guys. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, share, subscribe, and until next time, happy modeling.